sit here and preach. Okay. <laughs> Good evening. Okay. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. This is a new mic for me, so I'm not used to it holding it so close. Thank you all for coming tonight. Uh, we are excited to share our uh, Lenten uh, service with you, our Ash Wednesday, and we have a very special presentation tonight. <clears throat> Today we begin a new pattern in our faith journey here at Amazing Grace Evangelical Lutheran Church as we welcome Pastor Gary Haddock as our interim pastor. In the coming days, let us support one another by our continued presence at worship, our sharing in the means of grace, and the words of welcome. Mm -hmm. We are Thank definitely God. very glad to have you. Welcome. Great to be with you, folks. Um, you all should have a paper in, and this is a responsive reading. So, um, I read my little part, and now you say... May, May God strengthen our community and relationships with power and use inside. Let us seek a renewal of our ministries through the naming of our talents and strength as we prepare for the future. May God help us to identify one another's gifts and open ourselves to their presence and challenge. Let us rejoice in the fruits of partnership in Christ Jesus as our Amazing Grace Evangelical Lutheran Church Call Committee and our Bishop Staff Person, Reverend C.C. Mills, work together during the call process while Pastor Haddock partners with our Congregational Council to provide congregational leadership. May God grant us patience, a sense of humor, and the courage to speak the truth in love. O oh Lord, as your church has continually sought your will, sustain and inspire the work of the call committee. May God's Spirit guide the decisions of this congregation. Let us ask God's empowerment of all leadership positions, the staff, congregation, council, committees, and all those who do good deeds and perform necessary tasks in this congregation. Help us, Lord, to work in harmony, in harmony with the spirit and purpose. Pastor Haddock, will you lead, comfort, and reflect with us during this time of transition? I will, by God's help. To you, members of Amazing Grace Evangelical Lutheran Church, will you support Pastor Haddock in our ministry together, knowing that it will be brief, but the results enduring? We will, by God's help. Help us to value this time together as a reminder that our work continues. Our Lord calls us to serve as disciples and empowers us by the Holy Spirit each and every day. Lord, enable us to live our days in praise of your glory. Amen. Welcome, Pastor Haddock. We are very pleased to have you, and we are excited about what's going to be happening in the next few months and thank you for joining us well thank you it's a privilege to be with you an honor to to uh, to walk this uh, phase of your journey alongside of you and to and to lead you in this time um, i am fully confident that god will provide for this congregation uh, i know pastor frank left uh, i think pretty quickly i we'll just name it for what it is and um but, you know, there will be another pastor, and I, I invite your prayers uh, for Amazing Grace and the call committee as, as they look and seek to discern um, who it is God has chosen uh, to be the next pastor here at Amazing Grace. So uh, I come to you as a, as a retired pastor, believe it or not, here I am dressed and suited up, but, <laughs> <laughs> but I retired this past August uh, from St. Mark's in Claremont after having been there uh, right at 13 years and uh, having served in ministry for 39 years. And uh, 
I guess I'm standing before you because it, it is truly, it is in my bones. Uh, I don't know how else to say it. People say, what? I say, well, it's just who I am. It's who I'm called to be. And uh, so that's, that's why I'm, I'm here. Uh, privileged to be with you. So we'll see what God will do with us and what God will do for you in your future. And I'm confident that uh, it will be good. So um, uh, I will set up office hours. Uh, I'll be here at least one portion of a day during the week. I haven't decided when that will be exactly yet. I am planning to be in Monday, this coming Monday, just to get started after our Sunday. And to, uh, but then you'll hear from me. Did you get the one call today? Have you gotten the one call? Yes. Okay. Yes. So you'll, you'll get communication and that way you'll know uh, what that day will be. And I encourage you as well, if you have any concerns or questions, uh, you can pick up the phone and call me. You can make an appointment to see me. Um, you can drop by. Uh, I want to be accessible and available to you. And if there is a concern that you'd like to share, um, feel free to do so. Even if it's about me. <laughs> I, 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 listen, I, you know, I've got clay feet like everyone else. I certainly do. So uh, I welcome that uh, open, transparent dialogue uh, so that uh, we can get on with each other. You know? So, um, but again, thank you, and uh, we'll see. It'll be good. All right. Well, tonight we have our Ash Wednesday service. We enter into the, um, into the Lenten journey, and there is an explanation of the history of Lent in your bulletin that uh, tells you a little bit about the background. But in reality, uh, I won't preach two sermons tonight, but in reality, um, the baptismal discipline grows out of baptism. It grows out of who we are, named and claimed in Christ. As Luther himself said in his large catechism, I don't know if you've read that, but I would highly suggest that you take a look at it, because there's a lot more, there's a lot more there. But Luther talks about that if we would be Christian, we must practice the work that makes us Christian, and that is living our baptism. And uh, he makes it very clear that we are called to be those who put off the old Adam and Eve in our lives, and that we are privileged and blessed and graced to put on Christ and his righteousness and his mind, his behavior, his character in our lives. And that's the paradox we all live in, uh, certainly. But Lent is a, an intentional journey of really focusing on that. Who are we called to be as God's people? How are we called to live? So, and, and it comes out of this, this gift of grace, means of grace in holy baptism. So uh, that's part one. I'll share more with you shortly. <laughs> All right. Ask you to stand a little too soon. <laughs> it's okay. We're all good. All right. Thank you. A reading from Joel, the second chapter. Blow the trumpet in Zion. Sound the alarm on my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble, for the day of the Lord is coming. It is near. A day of darkness and gloom, a day of clouds and thick darkness. Like blackness spread upon the mountains, a great and powerful army comes. Their like has never been from of old, nor will be again after them in ages to come. 
Yet even now, says the Lord, return to me with all your heart, with fasting, with weeping, and with mourning. Rend your hearts and not your clothing. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love, and relents from punishing. Who knows whether he will not turn and relent and leave a blessing behind him, a grain offering and a drink offering for the Lord your God. Blow the trumpet in Zion, sanctify a fast, call a solemn assembly, gather the people, sanctify the congregation, assemble the aged, gather the children, even infants at the breast. Let the bridegroom leave his room and the bride her canopy. Between the vestibule and the altar, let the priests, the ministers of the Lord, weep. Let them say, spare your people, O Lord, and do not make your heritage a mockery, a byword among the nations. Why should it be said among the peoples, where is their God? Brothers and sisters, God created us to experience joy and communion with him, to love all humanity, and to live in harmony with all of his creation. However, despite this, God, God has given us an intended destiny, despite our sin that separates from, from God, our neighbors, and creation. We do not enjoy the life our creator intended for us. Our Father is grieved by our, mis by our missing the mark, and invites us and encourages us to turn, to repent, to put on Christ, and to live. Our Lenten discipline is an expression of living out our baptism. As baptized disciples of the Lord Jesus, we are called to struggle against everything that leads us away from love of God and neighbor. As baptized disciples, we are called and empowered to put on Christ and the virtues of the Spirit in our lives. Confession and repentance, submission, worship, Prayer, meditation, and the works of love, all disciplines of Lent, help us to embrace and to live our baptism. I encourage you, therefore, to commit yourself to this grace-filled and spirit-driven work of baptism, to confess your sins and to ask God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit for strength to persevere in your Lenten discipline. Now let us sing hymn number 608, Softly and Tender.
in the brief order for confession as it is printed in your bulletin. And we will do the bold face type together. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your loving kindness. In your great compassion, blot out my offenses. Wash me through and through from my wickedness. Cleanse me from my sin. I know my transgressions. My sin is ever before me. Against you only have I sinned. I have done what is evil in your sight. You are justified when you speak. You are upright in your judgment. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Indeed, I have been wicked from my birth, a sinner from my mother's womb. For behold, you look for truth deep within me. You alone will make me understand wisdom secretly. Purge me from my sin, and I shall be pure. Wash me, and I shall be clean indeed. Let me hear of joy and gladness, that the body you have broken may rejoice. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Hide your face from my sins. Blot out all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence, and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Give me the joy of your saving help again. Sustain me with your bountiful spirit. I shall teach your ways to the wicked, and the sinners shall return to you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O God, my salvation, deliver me from death, and my tongue shall sing of your righteousness. Open my lips, O Lord and my mouth shall declare your praise. I was willing to offer you an act of sacrifice, but you take no delight in burnt offerings. The sacrifice of God is a troubled spirit, a broken and contrite heart, O God, you will not despise. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. You may be seated. At this time, I would invite you to come forward. If you're able to come forward, if you're not, uh, I would ask someone to direct me or you'd raise your hand. I can, I can do that. Okay. All right. I'll be fine. Why don't we start over here? Remember that you are dust. And to dust you shall be.
We continue with the litany as it is printed in your bulletin. Accomplish in us, O God, the work of your salvation, that, that we, we may, may show forth your glory to the world. world by the cross and passion of your Son, our Savior. Bring, Bring us with all your saints to the joy of his resurrection. Let us pray. Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, in this journey, in this season of Lent, we ask that you would pour out your grace into our lives, that we may be and focus on those things that indeed call us to a deeper and more intimate relationship with you, that we might be about those things that indeed call us to love ourselves properly and to love our neighbor, for we seek to be faithful to you and your mission. As we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We continue now with another prayer, the prayer of the day. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, you hate nothing you have made, and you forgive the sins of all who are penitent, creating us new and honest hearts, so that truly repenting of our sins, we may receive from you, the God of all mercy, full pardon and forgiveness that we may grow in faithfulness through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. Amen. The Gospel reading is from St. Matthew, the sixth chapter. Jesus said to the disciples, Beware of practicing your piety before others in order to be seen by them, for then you have no reward from your Father in heaven. So whenever you give alms, do not sound a trumpet before you, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, so that they may be praised by others. Truly I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you give alms, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing so that your alms have been done in secret, and your Father, who sees in secret, will reward you. And whenever you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners, so that they may be seen by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But whenever you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to your Father, who is in secret. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And whenever you fast, do not look dismal like the hypocrites, for they disfigure their faces so as to show others they are fasting. Truly I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you fast, put oil on your head and wash your face, so that your fasting may be seen not by others, but by your Father who is in secret. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moths and rust consume and where thieves break in and steal, but store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust consumes and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from him who was, who is, and who is yet to come again, Jesus, the living Christ. Amen. What do we do with Lent? There's been a lot that's been done with it. I mean, a, a great deal. Um, for some, Lent is uh, a time to become better Christians in order, to, be, in order to, to gain God's favor, or somehow to get our life with God out of a sense of guilt. Or we do this out of fear of punishment. Some have made that Lent. It's also been used and seen as, as a motivation to lose weight, <laughs> or to give up chocolate, or to eat less fatty foods. To begin an exercise program to improve one's life and health. Some see it as a time to break old habits so that the quality of one's life can be improved. 
Well, some of these may be involved in the discipline of Lent, but it's not it. That is not the very heart, the very focus of Lent. As those who are baptized, as those who know the good news, and as those who have received the Spirit, we hear the challenge and we take up the motivation and invitation of this Lenten season to become more faithful. We are called to be faithful children of God. And we do so with hope and promise. We enter into Lent not as a time for improving our waistline or health or simply to break old habits. We do not enter just as a self-improvement, nor as a dark, drudgery, despairing time to self-flagellate ourselves of just how horrible we are. <laughs> That's not the case. The work of Lent is this. Three things, primarily. We reflect on God's mighty acts for us through history and specifically in Jesus Christ. And we focus on the extent and the depth and the height to which our Lord went for us. Surely we are worthy of something or he wouldn't have given his life. We are created in the image and likeness of God, although we're imperfect and we all have play feet. But we reflect in this journey on who God is and what God has done for us in Jesus Christ. So that's, a, that's the number one thing, the first one. The second is that we assess where we are in our life, not only in Christ, but also in our life together. So we assess our faithfulness to God, and we assess God's call and purpose for our lives. And then thirdly, we, make it, we are called to take up and to make decisions about how we may move towards living more faithful lives. Every, everything we do is in service of being more faithful. So it's um, not only faithful lives of love and service, but also to enact them, to make them real, concrete in our lives. We are those who know forgiveness. We are those who know new freedom in Christ. And precisely because we know the Spirit of God in our lives, we can, as Luther said, embrace our call we can strive to become and strive to live and to act, strive to love and to serve as little Christ. That's what Luther said, the Christian life is the call. We are to become little Christ in the world, and we are to become little Christ to one another. So the six Sundays of Lent will lead us through those mighty acts, whereby we know reconciliation by grace through faith. So we're given this opportunity during the 40 days of Lent to assess, to decide what changes need to be made in our lives in order that we might become more faithful, in order that we might become more of who we are called to be as baptized children of God, and that we might love and, and serve our neighbor. So Ash Wednesday is the sounding of the trumpet. It's a wake-up call to intensively and seriously take up our baptismal call. It is the call to do an honest appraisal, an honest assessment of our lives. Now in thinking about this, I wanna draw an analogy with you between retailers and taking inventory and the inventory to which we are called in this Lenten season. Each year, particularly beginning at each new year, uh, retailers do an inventory of their stock. They wanna determine what they have lost, or what, what the shrinkage has been in their business, and also to make room for the new. Uh, that is, the, that is the, the phrase for retailers, shrinkage, you know? Um, it, it's a term for loss of merchandise or money. And they've determined there are five different ways that shrinkage occurs. One is administrative, paperwork error, uh, mistakes marking up and marking down account for as much as 15% of retail loss. Another is that of fraud. It occurs when outside vendors stock inventory within the store, and about 6% of shrinkage occurs that way. A third source is unknown, <laughs> so, because they can't otherwise account for it. The fourth uh, source of shrinkage, 33%, 
is, is that of shoplifting. Uh, it's just outright stealing by customer. The fifth is what retailers call internal shrinkage. It accounts for the most amount of loss by retailers. Internal theft is the number one source of shrinkage for retail businesses. 41% resulted from employee theft. Uh, I never quite knew how much shrinkage occurred in the food business. And there's a ton of that that goes on. Having talked with folks who are in that business, how they have to watch you know, their employees and people in and out, vendors, just to, to track it all. So. Now, inventories are done to determine overall shrinkage, discover employee theft, and by taking those inventories, they are done to make room for and to free up new merchandise. So, can you see where I'm going with this? We do what? We examine our lives to see what shrinkage or loss we may have in our relationship with God to make room for the new. It's essential for us to take inventory of our lives, to keep our lives on track and growing in faithfulness. So we take the time to examine the quality, the tenor, the tone, depth, direction, and commitment of our lives in Christ. So what about you? What type of internal shrinkage have you experienced in your life? That might be the first question of this Lenten journey for all of us. I say you, I'm asking myself that question too. Has something in our relationship to God been lost along the way? And if that's the case, what is it and how did it occur? Do we have a sense that we're not as happy, not in as close a relationship with God and maybe others as we would want to be or used to be? If we take a hard look, do we find we're scarcely a shadow of our, of our former spiritually robust selves? So in many ways, Ash Wednesday is the kickoff of inventory. It's inventory day, folks. And Lent is an in, uh, inventory season and a time to take and to make an honest appraisal. Steve Harper, a former professor of spiritual formation at Asbury Seminary, tells about being in a distant city conducting a seminar on the spiritual life. I'm going to continue this thread of inventory. Afterward, an active church member asked if he could drive Harper to the airport. And in route, the man said to Harper, When I became a Christian, my life was radically changed. I was regularly and meaningfully involved in the church. But over a period of time, my enthusiasm waned. Until today, I am a Christian mostly by habit. I've lost the joy of my faith, and sometimes I wonder if I'm really a Christian at all. That's considerable shrinkage, I would say. Harper told this story as an introduction to an article about spirituality. He acknowledged that it's quite possible to become spiritually bored and depressed about one's practice of faith. And importantly, he said, past experience, is, past experience is not automatically sufficient for the future. Past experience is not automatically sufficient for the future. That means, folks, we never just get it and we never just have it. <laughs> it's a journey. It's a journey of growth. It's a journey of joy. It's a journey of sadness. It's a journey of struggle. It's a journey of achievement. It's a journey of praise. It's a journey of lament. It's all of that. Indeed it is. The prophet Joel sets the inventory mood and call to change. Yet even now, you get that sense, blow the trumpet. You get that sense of waking people up and waking them up now, says the Lord. Return to me with all your heart. It may be with fasting, with weeping, and with mourning, but the important thing is to return to the Lord your God. God is not here to scold us. He is gracious and merciful, slow to anger, and abounding in steadfast love, and relents from punishing. 
That's not to say God doesn't get on our case, <laughs> okay? <laughs> there is law and gospel. That's who we are, who we understand, how we understand Scripture as Lutherans. Law and gospel. That we're not condemned. God awakens in us a sense and gives us the opportunity for repentance. We need to turn around. As we do the assessment, as we do the appraisal, as we reflect and pray, the Holy Spirit indeed awakens us, awakens within us the need to go a different direction, shows to us and reveals to us in where we have failed to live our life of faith and perhaps how we might live it more faithfully. So it frees up room for something new, to make more space for things of God. In this particular text, this gospel text, Jesus talks about that which does fill up that space, the things of this world, where moth and rust destroy and things break in and consume, where your, what, where your treasure is and there your heart is. So we're called to give our lives to the central the main treasure, who is Christ himself and the spirit in our lives. And so we're freed up for new ways of thinking, for new attitudes, for new perspective, for new ways of being and new ways of serving in the call to become more faithful. And it can be done in many ways. There's a prayer of examine. That's more of a Roman Catholic tradition, but a wonderful tradition. There's meditation. There are devotionals, contemplative prayer, fasting, Fasting not only from food, but also denial or fasting from other things. New and deeper works of love and service. Embracing a renewed commitment to Christ. Renouncing personal sin in our lives that hold us captive and struggling with them. Choosing to put on Christ and his grace. And Christ honors that. Absolutely. Christ does and the Spirit does. We are not meant to stay just as we are. <laughs> that is the gospel message. We are never, ever left alone. And we are those who are called to grow in our life in Christ, to grow in faithfulness. I'll close with this. Uh, it's a story about Luciano Pavarotti. He told of how his father helped him discover the direction of his life work. As a young man, he was studying to become a teacher, and he received an invitation to study with Arrigo Pola, a famous tenor in his hometown of Modena, Italy. When it came time for him to graduate from college, he approached his father for advice. So he looked at his, his father and said, shall I be a teacher or a singer? His father replied, Luciano, if you try to sit on two chairs, you will fall between them. For your life, you must choose one chair. Well, we know the rest of the story. He chose the singing chair. And it would be seven years after he made that decision before he would reach New York's Metropolitan Opera. But he credited that, that decision to choose one path and one path only as the key to his vocation. So Ash Wednesday invites us to choose the path of faithfulness of our life with God. And it calls us as well to sit in the chair of faithfulness, to put on Christ and his righteousness so that we can live into who we are gifted and called to become and to be in Christ. So I welcome this journey with you we are to, we remember you are dust, and to dust you shall return. That is the putting off. There will be another day in this space where we'll be saying something radically different. Glory. <laughs> That's the promise and the confidence and the hope that we have as children of God. Amen.
That's right. Yeah. Our sermon hymn is actually uh, on the board, 773. Uh, we changed it. We forgot to tell the bulletin. So the bulletin has it wrong. We'll now sing 773. Precious Lord, take my hand. Would you please stand? Renew your church, O God, when we have drifted from our call to proclaim repentance and to guide your people toward justice, lead us back to you. Encourage believers who hold the church's doors open to those who have felt excluded. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Renew your creation, O God. Transform parched places into watered gardens and preserve every creature that awaits the arrival of spring. Turn each of us from practices of environmental exploitation to become responsible stewards of all you have made. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Renew our civic life, O God. Teach those in authority to advocate for liberation of all who are oppressed and grant them courage to make difficult decisions. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Renew our lives, O God. Spare your people from diseases of the body, mind, or spirit, and send healing to those overcome by illness or grief. Restore to us the joy of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. hear our prayer. Renew this congregation, O God, during these 40 days of Lent. Confirm our sense of mission and expand our imagination for ministry, especially in this pivotal time in the life of Amazing Grace. We ask for your spirit to especially 
be with the call committee and move in and among this congregation. Deepen our faith, increase our love, draw us into your unfolding work of healing and restoration. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. As we mark ashes on our foreheads, we give you thanks, we give you praise, O oh God, for all those who have gone before us, who have died and are alive with you, with the saints in light. We give you thanks and praise that you receive them into your eternal embrace. May we follow the path with the pioneer of our faith, Jesus our Lord led. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Accept the prayers we bring, O God, on behalf of a world in need for the sake of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 You may be seated. Holy, mighty, and merciful Lord, heaven and earth are full of your glory. In great love you sent to us, Jesus, your Son, who reached out the hill to heal the sick and suffering, who preached good news to the poor, and who on the cross opened his arms to all. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks and broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering his death, resurrection, and ascension, we await his coming in glory. Pour out upon us the spirit of your love, O Lord, and unite the wills of all who share this heavenly food, the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now we are bold to pray the prayer our Lord taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen.
Would you please stand? Let us pray. God of abundance with this bread of life and cup of salvation, you have united us with Christ, making us one with all your people. Now send us forth in the power of your Holy Spirit that we may proclaim your redeeming love to the world and continue forever in the risen life of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen. Amen.